Then we'll put our prairie blush taters down the middle here. Once again, stacking them in here pretty thick. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Friday, August 25th here in South Georgia, and it is time. It is tater time, fall edition. So a few days ago, I was getting some taters from underneath the barn to cook for supper, and I noticed we had a few here from our spring harvest that had some nice sprouts on it. So the last few days, I've been studying on it quite a bit, and I think it's time to get some of these in the ground. So on today's video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know about planting fall taters. Can you pull it off? Can you make it happen? And why maybe you should try it. So a couple videos ago, we got those wormy corn stalks out of these tall raised beds here. And we planted a fall round of summer squash in these first two beds. I told you that we were probably gonna save that bed on the end there for some fall taters. We had some taters in these two beds in the spring. And so we'll put some now in this bed on the end to kind of even things out as far as our rotation goes. So back in the spring, we planted, I think, seven different varieties of taters from Wood Prairie Farms. We planted three different varieties in our in-ground plot and then four different varieties in those two raised beds. Now, some of those varieties store a lot better than others. So let's go into the barn, look at what we've still got left from our spring harvest, see what's sprouting and what's still good to eat. So on our storage rack here underneath the barn, we've got all those Seminole pumpkins we harvested a few videos ago. Got some onions back there, not many. I probably need to chunk those. I think they are starting to rot on me. My onion storage methods need a little work, but my tater storage method is pretty on point. So we have them sitting on this rack of hardware cloth here, and then we just get a cheap dollar tablecloth from the dollar store down the road and keep them from getting any sunlight. And this works remarkably well for storing taters, even through the heat of summer when it's nasty and humid down here. So let's take a look at what we've got on this rack here. It may look like we haven't been eating any taters, but I promise you we have. We just had such a bumper harvest this spring that we still have quite a few left here. So this is the Baltic Rose variety, one of my favorite varieties to eat. And you can see there, those are storing really, really well. I don't see any sprouts hardly on those. So we're probably not gonna put any of those in the ground. Here's our Huckleberry Gold Taters. Those still look really, really good. So probably not gonna plant any of those. Over here, we have the Prairie Blush variety. And we are starting to get a few sprouts on those, so we'll probably grab some of those and stick in that raised bed in a minute. Now on this bottom rack here, these varieties haven't stored quite as well. I'm guessing it's a variety thing. I don't see any reason why that middle rack would have any different conditions than this bottom rack here. We can see these fingerling taters here. They're kind of on their way out. I found a few of those with sprouts on them, so we may grab a few of those to put in the ground. And then over here, I didn't do a great job of separating all my varieties because all these kind of look pretty similar. We've got Rose Gold, Elba, and Sharpo Mira in here. And we've got a decent amount of sprouts popping up on some of those. So should be some good seed taters on that little batch right there. All right, so we found us a nice little assortment there for a small fall planting. We've got a decent amount of prairie blush taters right there with sprouts on them. This is a mixture of Sharpo Mira, maybe a few Elbas in there, and some Rose Gold Taters. I did find a few of those Baltic Rose Taters with some tiny sprouts on them. We're going to give those a go because that is my favorite variety. And then we've got a few decent looking fingerlings here with sprouts on them as well. Now you may be wondering, Trav, looks like you got plenty of taters there underneath the barn. Why you need to plant more? Well, although those taters may look pretty good right now, they're probably not gonna make it through the winter from my experiences in the past. So planting some now and harvesting them in late November will ensure that we have taters pretty much year round. 
And if you've got taters from your spring harvest that are starting to sprout, yeah, you can still eat these with tiny sprouts on them. Nothing wrong with these at all. But maybe you've got so many that are sprouting, you can't eat them fast enough. So you might as well stick them in the ground, see what happens, and try to grow some more. And it's also a way to get more return on investment from your spring seed tater purchase. Now, we don't save seed taters from year to year, only from season to season, so from spring to fall. If you watch that interview we did with Jim Gerritsen from Wood Prairie Farm back earlier this year, I think, he talked about how seed taters can develop viruses in them over time that can cause some decline in production. And we've seen that before when we saved a strain of red taters for about three years. It seemed like every time we planted them again, we got lower and lower yields. So we buy fresh new seed taters in the spring, and then we will save some from that harvest to replant in the fall. But come next spring, we'll start again with a fresh new batch that is certified disease free. That way we're keeping some clean seed stock in the ground. So now let's talk about how do you know if you can grow some fall taters. So the most important thing here is timing and how many days you have left until your first frost date. Our first frost usually isn't until the end of November. You're gonna need about 90 days, at least 90 days, I would say, to grow out some fall taters. They will grow a lot faster this time of year than they do in the spring, because it's obviously still pretty warm out here, but give yourself 90 days. So take your average first frost date, count back 90 days, and that will give you an idea of when you need to be putting these in the ground. Here it is the end of August. This will give us 90 days or so until we get close to that average first frost date in late November. Now a couple things you can do if you're cutting it real close as far as the time you've got left until your average first frost date or maybe you get a rogue early frost, you can cover the taters obviously and protect them against that first freeze in this raised bed here we've got to set up we can easily cover those plants if we need to and sometimes that first light frost you get won't kill a tater plant completely it may burn the leaves a little bit but sometimes it won't completely kill it back even if it does kill it back, your taters in the ground are gonna be just fine. So that's what we did last year when we grew some fall taters in the ground in one of our no-till plots. We got kind of an early frost, earlier than we wanted. It killed back the plants completely and then we came in there a couple days later, dug up our taters. Yeah, they weren't as big as they would have been if they'd have made it a couple more weeks, but it was better than nothing. Now besides the planting time and how many frost-free days you have left, the other important thing here is you gotta have taters with sprouts on them. Taters without sprouts haven't broken dormancy, and if you stick those taters without sprouts in the ground, you'll be waiting on them to break dormancy in the ground, and a lot of times, this time of year, when it's still hot and humid outside, they'll rot in the ground before they ever break dormancy. Ask me how I know. So, I would recommend only planting taters with sprouts on them in the fall. Now, if you don't have any good seed taters from the spring with sprouts on them, you might be wondering where you can get some, and they're almost impossible to find this time of year. But earlier this morning, I did look on the Wood Prairie website. Like I said, it's August 25th, and they had a few varieties of seed taters left in stock that they were still shipping. Now, by the time this video airs, they may have stopped that, I don't know, but they had some as of this morning. So if you want to give fall taters a try and don't have any leftover taters to plant, you can go to woodprairie.com and always use the code lazydogfarm to get 5% off. All right, so now we need to get this raised bed ready to plant those fall taters. We still have stubs from those corn stalks in here. I really don't want to pull those up, and make a mess, just want to leave them right there. We've got two lines of drip tape here that would be nice for watering these taters once they get up and going. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to put three rows in this bed. So one right down the middle here, one on this end in this little narrow sliver I have, and then another one down here on this end. That will give us three rows in this bed, good spacing between those rows. I think that will work out. 
So back in the spring when we grew some taters in those other two raised beds and got a bazillion pounds out of each raised bed, we used this trench method for the first time. It worked so well. I'm definitely going to use it again. So what I'm going to do is take my trenching shovel and basically trench out this right here, trench out this middle, trench out that end over there. We'll put all our extra soil right here on top of this drip tape on these corn stalks and then we'll be able to plant our taters in those trenches. All right, so that's what we're going for right there. We got three trenches, one over there, one in the middle, one over here. Got these ridges built up here. Yes, if we get a hard rain, it may backfill some of these trenches, but that's okay. We're gonna backfill them anyway as these taters grow. So this is a great way to do it without having to take dirt out of your beds. Just build up some ridges here, make you some trenches for planting your taters. Now when we plant taters, every time we plant taters, we always like to start out with a somewhat balanced pre-plant fertilizer. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of this coop grow down in these trenches here. Not a whole lot, just a few handfuls of these short little rows here. Alright, so now we're ready to stick some taters in these trenches here. You'll notice I'm not cutting these up. We're going to plant whole taters. I have found for whatever reason, I do a lot better planting whole taters in the fall. I didn't start becoming successful with fall taters until we started planting whole ones. Even if I'd cut them up and let them scab over a little bit, they'd still always rot in the ground. So might want to try just planting whole taters, not worrying about cutting them up for the fall. So we're going to stack these in here pretty thick because that's what we did in the spring and it worked pretty well. So I'm only going to put these about, I don't know, four inches apart, maybe a little closer than that so we'll do half of this row here with the baltic rows and then we'll finish it out with some of these fingerlings here then we'll put our prairie blush taters down the middle here once again stacking them in here pretty thick trying to make sure we got at least a few eyes kind of pointing up there with these taters that have eyes all over them you can't orient all the eyes pointing upward but we'll try to do our best here and now that our taters are down, we'll start covering up a little bit. We're not going to backfill these trenches completely yet. We're just going to cover up these taters a little bit here. And then as they sprout and start to grow, we'll backfill them completely and maybe even add some soil on top of them. This is some great soil here. I'm seeing all kind of worms and root associations in here. All kind of healthy stuff going on in here. And there we go, three rows of fall taters planted. And if this bed performs similar to those other two beds in the spring, we should get at least 30 or 40 pounds of taters out of this little raised bed here. You can see our ridges of soil still in place there. We'll use that leftover soil to heal these taters as they grow. And we'll probably have to come in here and add a little more on top as well. So once those tater plants get about six or eight inches high, assuming those taters don't rot in the ground there, then we'll start backfilling those trenches. We'll probably side dress with a little more coop grow, probably add a little bit of bagged mushroom compost in there. We did that in spring and it seemed to work really well. So we'll just keep adding soil around those plants as they grow, healing them up, and hopefully we get a pretty good harvest now it has been my experience that the fall tater grow out is not as productive as the spring tater grow out i've heard other people say they do much better with them in the fall than the spring but fall is just kind of a little bonus for us we don't have that high of expectations for it compared to spring but it is nice to have some taters throughout the winter and let me know in the comments below if you're planting any fall taters this year. Share where you are. Share any tips you have for fall compared to spring. That way other growers that want to give it a try can read your comments and learn. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. Also go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where you can find that coop grow fertilizer, our fig trees, and some other good stuff. And if you want to see one of those bumper tater harvests from the raised beds earlier this year, check out this video right here. We'll show you just how many pounds we were able to get out of one of those raised beds. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.